Welcome back, everybody. It's the Book Cougars, two middle-aged women on the hunt for a good read. I'm Emily. And I'm Chris. And we are so excited to have some guests with us here today. As listeners know, we love to go on Biblio adventures together, Chris and I. And there's two segments on our podcast where we talk about Biblio adventuring. But in the new world order, where we're currently, you know, being safe and staying at home, we're missing our Biblio adventures. And we're excited to have Caroline Lovett and Jenna Blum with us today because they are a dynamic duo that when all of this happened, jumped up, raised their hands, and started a really fun, I guess, organization called A Mighty Blaze. So because they are authors and, you know, teachers and all sorts of things, we're going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves. Okay. Thank you so, so much for having us here. We're absolutely honored and delighted. I'm Caroline Levitt. I'm a New York Times bestselling novelist. It still makes me surprised to hear myself say that. Uh, I teach writing at Stanford and UCLA Writers Program Extension Online and work with private clients. I write scripts. I'm a professional namer. I name products and, and chips and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, my work has appeared everywhere from the New York Times Modern Love about my tortoise to Real Simple to O Magazine <laughs> to a bunch of other places. And I just I'm just so delighted that um, my co-founder, Jenna Blum, and I started a Mighty, Mighty Blaze and we're delighted to be here. Thank you, Caroline. We're super delighted to be here. I love you, cougars. I'm not going to they're like the Thelma and Louise of the book world with their book there. Yes. <laughs> so I, I to be even like a little silver lining grateful for the fact that you're grounded because now we have you in our clutches and we get to talk to you today. So I'm excited about that. So I'm Jenna Blum. I also am a New York Times and internationally bestselling novelist, which, as you said, Caroline, when people introduce me that way, I'm like, you guys are really raising the bar. Like, now people have expectations. <laughs> I hear that as New York Times and international <laughs> <I know>. novelist. <laughs> Oprah, top 30 women writers. I am also a teacher. I teach for a fabulous business called Grub Street Writers in Boston, where I have taught for 21 years. So obviously it started when I was 16. Ha ha. <laughs> work with me on that. Um, and I'm a public speaker, or at least I was a public speaker until COVID. And now I speak everywhere on Zoom. Um, and apparently now, um, since we started A Mighty Blaze, I have been called everything from an entrepreneur, which I think is really funny, um, to yesterday somebody called me on a, a radio interview. She said, well, now you are a platform mogul. And I was like, oh, oh that nice. Is a stamp, a stamp or something. So, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a platform mogul now. Nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Biblio Adventures, this has just been such an incredible adventure for us, and we're so delighted to talk to you cookers about Mighty Blaze today. So thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Gosh, well, thank you both so much for being with us today, and thank you for bringing us so many great Biblio Adventures virtually. It's been really fantastic to learn about all these new books coming out, because, um, you know, like so many people in the industry, we really feel for authors who've worked so hard to write their books, you know, especially debut novelists or debut writers, I should say. And then they don't get these events, you know, that is kind of like the dream for some people and the horror of other people having to get <laughs> up in front of groups. Um, but we're wondering if you could tell us a little bit, like, how did this come to be? Did you guys have a phone conversation? Like what happened? We did. It actually started where I had a big event for my book that's coming out with or without you this August at the Texas Library Association. And it was in front of a lot of people. And so I had practiced a speech and done all these hand movements and done in front of the mirrors. And then they canceled it. And I remember walking around the house saying, nothing is canceled. Nothing is going to be canceled. This no, 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 no. So I made a video of my speech speech with the hand movements and I sent it to Algonquin my publisher and said this is what they missed and they said oh this is really great we're going to send this out in our mailing and I started to think well if they're doing this for me maybe I can do this for other writers so I started the nothing is canceled book tour and I put the word out to writers saying you know what 
I'll put videos of you on my blog. All you have to do is promise to shout out another writer and shout out an indie bookstore. And it blew up. I had so many requests that I couldn't do it. And then in the midst of this, the Washington Post called and they said, oh, we heard of this and we want to support it and blah, blah, blah. And I was drowning. And then luckily, my lifesaver, Jenna Blum, called me up and said, you know, I'm doing something that's similar to you. Do you want to join forces? And I said, oh, yes, please, please. So we joined forces and started a mighty blaze. And we thought we were just, you know, two writers in yoga pants flying the plane without knowing what the plane is doing, and it blew up even bigger. It was all of a sudden we had Poets and Writers, Publishers Weekly, and the Authors Guild, and all these places, and all these authors like Elizabeth Strutt and Michael Shea Bond and Carly Simon saying, we want to support you. And we had to hire a staff. And we have this huge staff. No one's being paid. We all work 8,000 hours a day. And Jenna really is the entrepreneur. I mean, I call her Jen Oprah because she's she's amazing. <laughs> this would, no, this would not be this would not be a thing if it wasn't for for Jenna. It really would not. So, Jenna, <laughs> that's so nice. Thank you. It wouldn't be a thing without both of us because the the heart of the blaze is the yin yang symbol, and that would be me and Caroline. The things that she loves to do, and she modestly admitted the fact that. We have all of these author supporters because she reached out in our first week of existence and said, can you please lend your name to The Blaze so we can get some street cred in the industry? And so she was talking to people like Rick Moody and Alice Hoffman and Danny Shapiro and Caroline being Caroline. Everybody loves her for obvious reasons. So everybody said yes. And so I would say something ridiculous like, Caroline, can you please write to the BEA and get them on board? And then she would say, yes. <laughs> next day we'd be on a call with the BEA we were talking about you know, what can we yeah. do for them? What could we, what could we exchange so that we could all keep each other afloat? So, yes. But I apparently um, grew into being sort of the producer of the group's initiatives, and I was quite surprised as somebody who does spend most of her life at home in isolation in yoga pants playing with imaginary people that I actually really enjoy the connection that we have with our staff of <laughs> I keep saying staff in quotes because it's really, you know, 18 unpaid volunteers who I bark things at now all the time. <laughs> or the tech isn't working, do something. Uh, and I really enjoy doing this and every, nobody else is surprised. They're like, Jenna, you've always been really bossy. So this is perfect for you. <laughs> I think it's, the, the blaze has allowed me to step into some family shoes because my dad started out as a news writer for CBS and then eventually over time became a news producer. So I think I am just sort of following his producer footsteps, but I'm so gratified by the blaze. Like every morning I wake up, I have a great sense of purpose, which was not always the case when I was writing. When I think, what do I have to do today? Oh crap, I have to revise a scene and it's being squirrely and I don't know how to do it. Now I wake up and I think I get to help writers all day, every day, doing different things. Um, when we started The Blaze, um, I literally threw up a Facebook page and said, Caroline, let's do this. Let's make a social media platform so that writers can step onto Facebook, step onto Twitter, step onto Instagram, post love letters to their readers, post videos to their readers if they choose, descriptions of their books, cover art, author photo. And then that way they can debut their book babies, which otherwise they've worked on for three years, five years, 10 years, 12 years, um, and suddenly don't get a chance to introduce. They're just introducing it in a dark closet or a void. And the response, as Caroline said, was so overwhelming, so gratifyingly so that for the first week, my metaphor was, I feel like we're the one lifeboat for the Titanic and all 1,400 people are trying to <laughs> on board at once. So our first yeah. couple of weeks, and we're still only a month old, but it seems like it has longer traction. That first couple of weeks was really about organizing and figuring out what exactly could we offer, could we help writers and bookstores and bloggers and um, offer, you know, give back Sundays so we could give more in other ways. And, and what were we going to do? We have quarantini parties, so we wanted to form like a fun community. And so we were really trying to build the rocket while we were flying the rocket. And now I feel like I still don't know what we're doing, but at least <laughs> we have like a, regular, a regular pattern of offerings for the community. Well, I, I know what you've offered for me is, you know, as we said, Chris and I like to go on Biblio adventures. And so we quickly renamed them Couch Biblio Adventures <laughs> oh, because, you know, we're all at home. And so, you know, I saw Caroline's very, you know, first post because I 
might stalk her on Facebook a little bit uh, when she when she said, you know, the, the nothing is canceled book tour. And I think I talked about it on our episode, you know, back about a month ago. And so for me, it's just a really nice way to feel like I'm sitting on my couch, but I can see these wonderful authors talk about their books, you know, and then I it warms my heart because, you know, Chris and I spent a lot of time separately and together going to book events and going to libraries. And, right. you know, it's a real void in my life that I feel like a mighty yeah. blaze has filled, yeah. you know? So that's the, you know, I know it's offering something to the authors, but it's really offering something to us readers as well. So can you talk a little bit about how, just how people find you and maybe a little bit about the form of the week schedule? Cause I know you've got, I'm sure Jenna, in, in <laughs> Jenna's the one. you've got a very nice schedule in place. Yeah. I'm like, I can spin that reference. <laughs> For you. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so glad that we're offering like the blaze, which I imagine is a sort of a torch made up of a lot of book candles put together. That was the impetus behind the name. And I'm so glad that it's guiding in readers as well as writers. Um, I just invited a book club of 50 last night to our quarantine party on the, on the 24th. <laughs> Great. It, I think it's true. You know, you you are sitting at home. I know many of us are having a hard time concentrating on reading longer form fiction or nonfiction, which we normally would be able to immerse into. And so what we're really hoping to offer people is is book information and also fun. You know, I think um, I watch the news every night, the news producer's daughter. I watch ABC, NBC and CBS every night. I average them together. And by the end of doing that, I feel like a good citizen. And I'm also so completely depressed that I have to watch, like, you know, Mrs. Maisel about 50 times <laughs> so I can go to bed after soaking my thumb in vodka. Um, so what we're trying to do is offer readers and writers some fun along with the information about the new books coming out. So here's how this works. So every Tuesday, which is when the books are born, I don't know why they only come on Tuesdays, but they do. We offer our Tuesday pub day, which we kick off with something we call debut spotlight because we want to give debut authors a little extra love. It's so hard for those of us with longer careers to release a book into nothingness. But when it's the fulfillment of your lifelong dream and it's your first book, it's just such a soul crusher. So we decided yeah. to have that first hour of, the Blaze be about the debut. So they do interviews with Rachel Berenbaum, who is herself a novelist with a debut coming out uh, or a debut paperback coming out on Blaze May 12th, The Bend in the Stars. Rachel puts on her glitter vest and her Madonna headphones and she talks to the debuts and asks some questions about their book in a lightning round interview. And then the whole rest of the day on Tuesday from about eight in the morning to 12 midnight, authors post on our pages, which is a mighty blaze on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And then we augment that content and amplify the content. I am told this is called a signal boost. So that's what we do. Good, Good to um, know. <laughs> yeah, right. Too. I have a whole new language now as a mogul. <laughs> <laughs> so on Wednesdays, we like to give shouts out to indie bookstores. Um, we started doing this every Wednesday, scaled it back to one Wednesday a month. But I'm working with a team now and with bookshop.org to bring that back. So on Wednesdays, I want the Blaze pages to be taken over by two indie bookstores, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. The first one we profiled was wonderful, lovely Alex George's bookstore Skylark in Columbia, Missouri. Alec had the triple whammy of having his bookshop shuttered, his Unbound Literary Festival canceled, um, and he has a book coming out called The Paris Hours in May. So, of course, he was concerned about his own events for that. So we were delighted to help him. The second bookshop was Bookmarks. So if readers come to our platforms on Wednesdays, they see the bookstores. Thursdays, we have Celebrity Spotlight. So an author whom we all revere, worship, and love will interview an author who's publishing that week. Our first author, thanks to Caroline, was Anne Lamott. So only Caroline can do this, right? <laughs> <laughs> I shared a peanut butter sandwich with Anne Lamont years ago. So. <laughs> I was able to reach out. <laughs> Caroline, Caroline has like a little black book, right? Like Anne Lamont, yes. peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it's like I know she had, like she could open it and like Oprah and Michelle Obama and Reese Witherspoon will spring out of this book, right? But I'm sitting in my apartment in my disgusting leggings, which I have to now take off with a spatula, and I'm looking at Anne Lamott. I'm like, oh my god, I'm actually producing the segment with Anne Lamott. So we had Anne Lamott interview Becky Dienerston, who was producing a um, publish a novel called Hex. And their conversation, their 20 minutes long, was all about gratitude, gratitude for books, for readers, for mm. um, Becky's husband, about for kale. I mean, it was like this incredibly <laughs> thing. And then we had Adriana Trigiani introdu- introducing Haley Shipley as um, Strong Like Her, which was like an I Am Woman, Hear Me Roar interview. Yesterday, we had Jane Green interviewing Brad Aronson about um, goodness that people can do, little bits of kindness that they can put out in the world, because Brad's new book is called humankind and we were all crying by the end of that interview because of the stories of kindness spontaneous kindness so every thursday we offer one of these beautiful things um and then fridays we have our quarantini party so the last friday of every month we celebrate the authors who have published that month and we serve quarantinis which is a drink i invented that that invented that has an airborne gummy in it and you stir it with a thermometer and it's like an internal disinfectant that's (laughs) it And this upcoming Friday, we're hosting in conjunction with Literary Port, uh, Newburyport Literary Festival, who is going to be hosting their festival on the Mighty Blaze pages on April 25th. It's the first festival I know of to move completely online. So we're so excited to be hosting their panels, their party, their speakers. I'm actually appearing in two of the pest- festival panels. So that's going to be fun and, and exciting. So readers can check back all the time because we have these mainstay initiatives of pub day, bookstore, celebrity spotlight, and parties, and then we're going to be adding to that going forward. We actually have a new thing that's going to be starting in May that we're really excited about, which is called How the Light Gets In. And it's a series of essays that writers or anybody really can submit about kindness and connection during the age of corona. And we already have five essays, including one that's coming from Jane Green about all different things. Um, One is about, the first one we're having is from uh, a Mighty Blazer, actually, about his wife breaking a coffee cup and what that really means. We have one about a woman whose husband was never, ever home, and now all of a sudden he is. (laughs) (laughs) Which is real. It's it's just a wonderful, wonderful essay. And we have more coming in every day. So it's exciting. It's a way for people to participate in the blaze and to help other people and just a kind of connection. Of course, we want this to be as big as modern love. <laughs> we want it to be a podcast and a movie as well, but we're just starting small. <laughs> well, you've got your mogul here, so you yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to mention that issue too because it's new, but um, that's going to be on Sundays. So every Sunday starting in May, we're going to start posting the How the Light Gets In essays. And Caroline, do you want to talk about where that title came from? Because I just love that. Yeah, we were trying to think of what to call it. And we had all these names that weren't very good, like the Corona Connection, which sounded stupid. (laughs) And And very... COVID-19 yeah. 2020 version. So I started looking at, we started looking at quotes and there's that great, you know, Leonard quote, Leonard Cohen quote about, you know, the broken places are where the light gets in. And I thought, well, that's it. Because that means that way we're not hurting. We're, we're acknowledging that this is a terrible time and that it's really hard and we're not minimizing anybody's suffering. But on the other hand, we're hoping to add a little bit of light, you know, and a little bit of connection and a little bit of community. And um, so far, so good. So far, so good. Fantastic. Well, I feel like that's something you've really done with the mighty blaze. You know, it is for a lot of people, a very dark time, but you know, that I love how people have been pointing out on all the social media platforms, you know, do you notice that what is getting all of you through this terrible dark time is art, you know, and this is why we need to support artists and um, fund artists and, you know, all of that sort of thing. And I feel like you've really brought that together in one place, which is a lovely thing for readers right now. Yeah. It's important. It's like Emily St. John Mandel's novel Station Eleven was about a pandemic. But the message of that novel was that art persists, you right. know, and that's that's your light. That's your light. Yeah. Because survival is insufficient. I remember that. That was one of my favorite. Right. As 
I don't know whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, but I've been a pandemic literature reader since I was 11 and first read Stephen King's. Oh. Book. So first of all, I was extremely well prepped for this pandemic and I have like 50 cans of spit and a butane stove in my apartment in case the power goes <laughs> explosion in Boston. It's because I tried to let my butane stove, but I remember that book very well. Um, I loved uh, that that novel, and it and I remember that there's a traveling acting troupe in it that yes. across the mm-hmm. ravaged American landscape and says survival is not sufficient, and I, I survival is you know essential. But I'm so happy that we're able to provide people with that kind of connection in that community that I feel as though we all immediately rushed to as soon as it became apparent we couldn't meet in person anymore. People found the most ingenious, adaptable ways to get in touch with each other and Zooming with college roommates and cousins and and people they hadn't seen for 20 years and really reforming those connections. And I think what The Blaze is, is the literary version of that thirst and hunger for connection through Mm -hmm. specifically. Fantastic. Well, we are running short on time here, but we wanted to ask you both one more question, if you don't mind. Um, oh. it's, it's Friday, so, you know, there's the Friday read hashtag. Are you able to read anything right now, and is there a book that you'd recommend? Um, yeah, I actually have to read right now as part of my job. <laughs> I'm a book critic for the San Francisco Chronicle, and I just started reviewing books for AARP. So um, what did they just assign me that I have to read? Um, it, oh, it's a it's a uh, memoir by uh, Ruth Reichel's daughter. Oh. Uh, I forget the title of it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hate when I forget titles. But that's what I'm reading today so that I can review it. But yeah, I am able to read because it, it's harder because everything takes on a different meaning. And when you're reading a book and there's a whole crowd of people, I have to stop and think, <laughs> wow, a whole crowd of people. What would that be like? It's, it's a distant memory. But yeah, I think it's important to keep reading. And writing is a different story. I'm able to, I was able to write a paragraph yesterday, which is good because I have a book due. I've not been due in two years. Um so I figure paragraph at a day, but I think it's important yeah. to have those connections. Yeah. yeah. I think paragraph a day sounds good to me, honestly. Yeah. That's yeah. Normal times, which is why Caroline has 20 novels and I have three novels. So I tend to be <laughs> a, a slow and then a fast writer finally, but I'm not writing right now because I'm running the blaze and the blaze is really taking up about 12 to 14 hours a, a day of my time. But again, it's giving me this orchestral sense of purpose. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, I was halfway through a memoir. Um, I've never written a memoir before, so this is a brand new thing for me. But before COVID, I was writing a memoir about my black lab, Woodrow, um, mm. who lived to be 15. And then I lost him right before Christmas. And he was an extremely beloved dog. Um, and I'm writing about the last seven months of my life when he was not mobile. And so we sat on the bench across the street from my apartment here in downtown Boston. And that opened me up to all these incredible experiences with strangers and with friends and all of these encounters that things about mm-hmm. myself. Um, so it's called Woodrow on the Bench. And it's like, Tuesdays with Maury, except all the lessons are from this very elegant old dog. Um, and so I am I have set that aside for now, but I'm excited to get back to it. And I'm going to try to start now that the blaze has a set schedule factoring in my paragraph a day. So Caroline, thank you for the inspiration. And I didn't mean to do a pitch about my own not even finished book. Um, I actually am able to read. And because of blaze, I have so many books that I want to read that I could recommend. Um, Tara Shea Nesbitt was one of our first authors. She wrote a novel called Beheld that got a beautiful review in the Times about a murder on the Mayflower. Um, Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to finish reading that. Um, St. Ivo, which is Joanna Hirschen's new book, similarly glowing review in the Times. Oh, yeah. It's a wonderful book. She's One wonderful. And two couples, three steamy days at the end of the summer. What could go wrong? Yeah, I need that reading. And she's a beautiful writer. I'm making it sound like a pot boiler, but she actually is a beautiful literary writer. Um, and I have two books that I can recommend that are upcoming for your readers. One is um, Pubbing with Us on May 5th. Anna Solomon's The Book of V. Oh, yeah, it's just wonderful. One of the most anticipated books of spring. And I've known Anna for, I want to say, 25 years. She was in my first ever writing class that I taught for Grub Street Writing 
and I was wearing glasses because I thought they made me look older and smarter as opposed to actually <laughs> them. Uh, also, such a beautiful writer, and I took her aside with all my, you know, 26-year-old knowledge at that point and said, you're going to be a very important writer, and she was like, no. She was like, okay. Yes. Um, and a, a plug for an, an August book that was a May 5th book but got moved back because of COVID. Um, our friend Stephen Kiernan, who's the author of The Baker's Secret, um, mm -hmm. is coming out with a book called Universe of Two on August 4th about the man who designed the detonator for the Hiroshima bomb, um, who didn't know what he was designing. And then mm -hmm. the woman who is in love with him and what happens to their love affair based on when he finds out what his project actually is. So that's, that's universe of two. That's out. That's right. I, I just got, that was the last arc that I got <laughs> was Steven's new one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's such a tender story set in this, you know, hideous war machine. And so I feel like that's such a relevant thing for us all to read right now, the tenderness yeah. within the unprecedented fear and horror. So mm. it's such a timely book. And, I can't believe I can actually recommend book titles now. Thanks to the blaze. Usually people ask me at readings, what are you reading? And my brain shorts out instantly. It's happening. Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, blaze. Thank you, blaze. Awesome for giving me <laughs> Yeah. Those new mobile skills. Yeah, I'll right. tell you that we do a lot of this every day. <laughs> We're just laughing. And part of it is delight and that we get to do this. And the other part is that it's really fun. It's really, really fun. Yeah, absolutely it is. I, yeah. I also, before my mic drop, you're like, you're never getting rid of me. You have to get the gong. But <laughs> we do hope and intend to keep our plates spinning for the blaze after COVID yeah. is gone. Found a, a vaccine because two things that Blaze has taught us is that one, writers really need that centralized community. Writers and readers need that place to go because we live in a Tower of Babel era where there's so much noise about read this, read that, hear the writers, there are the writers. Like I'm happy to provide a coalescing place that we can do this. And the other is that I think every writer needs online marketing um, that we knew this before. COVID and people are very phobic about it. You know, some people love speaking, some people hate it. Video, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram story, what even is that? Um, and so we have noticed a, a need and a thirst in the community to help writers reach readers by using this skill set to promote their books and they'll be in service of their books and to their publishers. I think better if we are able to help them do that so that we can all meet at these big water coolers online. So that's what we're hoping to do is remain a community and an advocate for writers trying to get books out into the world. Yeah, that's well, fantastic. it's amazing yeah. because that's really what A Mighty Blaze has done is helped let the light in at a time yeah. when there's a yeah. lot of darkness. So thank you so much for thank that. You. Thank <laughs> you so much. Oh, We're gosh. so honored to be here. We really are. Yeah, you have been doing this for years, letting the light in for writers. So we're just following you, basically. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, we'll let you know about our mogul platform. Our platform, <laughs> right, yeah, we're moguls or whatever it is. <laughs> no, whatever it is, right? I'm sure I said that wrong. But I mean, now yeah, oh. Leo Adventures, you'll see Caroline and I in our own, you know, VW Bug following you. <laughs> <laughs> We're pioneering. We're just, we're just following. Oh, I love that. The Blazemobile. <laughs> yes. The Blazemobile. Well, thank All you right. so much for taking thank time you. to come talk with us today. Like, we appreciate it. We appreciate you so much. We just, I can't believe it. I keep looking at you thinking, oh my God, the book cougars are talking Cougar. to us. <laughs> we feel the same. Wow. <laughs> Thank you oh, so much. Well, if we get Mighty Place t-shirts, we're going to send you both some. Oh, we would Thanks. love it. We'd wear it with pride, for sure. Yeah.